how low-cost airlines are able to make it even though it is hard to give a straight definition or answer to this question. How are they able to offer such low airfares and become more affordable? Are they cutting costs or just by developing a better operation model? I believe is a little bit of both. Here are some of the major cost-effective measures budget airlines deploy. They save on fuel. They fly the same aircraft model. They have fewer onboard amenities and comfort. They cut in corners on staff. They fly to secondary airports. They use the point-to-point -point model. Overall customer experience and services are affected. We'll try to explain all of these. Budget airlines save on fuel cost and one way of doing that is by adding newer versions of aircraft. They acquire or purchase newer planes in quantities allowing them to bargain for a discounted price. Lower cost on new planes mean less payments every month for the airline. New aircraft incorporate the latest technology in the industry and are much more fuel efficient than older planes, so they can save tons of money on fuel, and that is a major offset expense when it comes to the flight cost per passenger. This is also the reason low-cost airlines tend to have younger fleet than full-service airlines. Have you noticed that budget airlines operate typically one type of aircraft? While Air, for instance, which ceased operations in March of 2019, operated the Airbus A320 and A330 family as well as EasyJet, while Ryanair is using the Boeing 737 family. The one type of aircraft model allows for relatively easy training on pilots, onboard crew members, ground crew, maintenance and airport staff. The airline staff has to be trained on only one type of aircraft which in turn saves significant amount of money and time for the airline. But Budget airlines aimed at the passenger who doesn't mind the lack of onboard amenities, be it complimentary or LFE. Budget aircraft have one type of class of cabin, typically economy, so no need for expensive boarding management systems. Everything becomes streamlined. Don't be surprised if your seat feels cramped, it doesn't have a comfortable headrest, armrest, or the seat is not reclining enough or at all. Not reclining seats require less maintenance. Often, the space between the seat in front of you will feel tight. The more seats in the cabin, the more paying customers on board. Seats in some airlines lack seat back pockets. With no seat back pockets, there will be less time needed for the onboard crew to turn around the plane after passengers the plane as they don't have to pick up as much trash or check seat back pockets. Onboard crew often will have to perform multiple tasks. For example, flight attendants will be asked to clean the cabin instead of having a cleaning crew to come on board after passengers the plane. Cleaning process comes down to picking up visible trash, but anything smaller than that, it remains. Flight attendants may also be asked to assist ground crew with boarding at the gate, and no need to staff for extra people to assist during boarding. By cutting staff and positions, the airlines can save money. The time budget airlines set for aircraft to get ready for the next flight is often no more than 30 minutes. Within this time frame, passengers have to the plane, bags have to be offloaded, and the new bags have to make it to the belly of the plane. Onboard crew quickly has to clean up the cabin and make necessary preparations to welcome the passengers for the next flight. The longer the plane sits on the ground, the more money it loses since passengers don't pay for the plane to sit at the airport but to fly. Low-cost airlines often will fly to smaller regional airports. They avoid the big major airport hubs. Ryanair, for example, flies to Gatwick and Stansted Airport, which are London's smaller regional airport. As these airports are less expensive to operate to and from in terms of gate fees, landing fees, to passenger fees. One or a few budget airlines can dominate such small airport. They can be the only airline flying in and out of these small airports. Low-cost airlines can dictate and negotiate on what best terms to use the small airports including landing and takeoff fees. What if the airport doesn't agree? Airline or airlines may leave and this airport will not have any major business or even has to close. Certainly, low-cost airlines can fly to bigger airports, but would do it at less busy times and when delays are much less likely to occur. 
One plane for a single day will serve multiple destinations continuously, is keeping the time spent on the ground to the bare minimum and stay in the air as much as possible. It is very much like a bus in the sky which makes stops at different destinations. If a delay occurs at any one destination, all consequent scheduled stops inevitably have to be delayed or even cancelled. In such circumstances, full-service airlines will try to provide a replacement aircraft while budget airlines want. Full-service airlines operate flights via their hub airports, so if you want to fly from point A to point B on a full-service airline, most likely you have to connect via that airline hub airport. To the contrary, low-cost airlines will fly you directly, which is called point-to-point -point model. However, the airline may not have regular service to certain destinations and may only fly two or three times a week and even cancel flights if there aren't enough passengers. The demand will dictate the supply. Some budget airlines would not allow for connecting flight because it adds costs for ground crews to transfer back, requires creating more sophisticated booking systems, and most importantly, the airline has to pay for passengers in case of missed flights due to delays or cancellations, which will, again, add operating costs. Low-cost airlines tend to hire less experienced crew members so they can pay them less. It is not that the crew misses training on safety safety but rather has less experience and could be paid less than average. With some airlines, bringing a check-in bag or trying to print your boarding pass at the airport can spell problems or at least incur additional fees. An airline may charge you an airport check-in fee if you haven't printed your boarding pass prior to arriving at your flight. Checking in at the airport is handled by electronic kiosk and often there is no one you can talk to even if you have a question. This is yet another way of saving operating costs. Forget about the jet bridge at the airport, it costs money. Expect to be shuttled to your aircraft by bus and walk the steps up to the cabin. These are some of the most common ways budget airlines use to save money. Now you can judge for yourself. How worth is every dollar you spend on a budget airfare? Consider that you may be paying less at the outset of things, but additional fees for checking in at the airport, for printing your boarding pass at the airport, for food and drinks on board, and so on can add up to your ticket. On-time arrival and departure of low-cost airlines is questionable. Expect flights to be delayed or canceled beyond the reasons of bad weather. What I recommend, be informed before you fly. Get to know the policies of any airline you travel, especially the budget airlines. Read the fine print, certain restrictions, conditions, and fees may apply.